In optometry, the ophthalmoscope is the most valuable tool used to examine the inside of the eye. It enables eye specialists to diagnose diseases such as glaucoma and the eye complications of diabetes. Now a research team led by the University of Warwick has created a digital version which provides an even better picture of the retina, as I'm about to find out here at the School of Engineering. So Peter, you're leading the research team. Can you tell me first of all, what is an ophthalmoscope and what's different about the one that you've designed? This is an ophthalmoscope and uh, it's an instrument that actually hasn't changed a great deal in the last hundred years. There's a light source in here which shines out and that goes through the pupil and that illuminates the back of the retina. We've actually changed it and I'll explain the changes. What we found difficult to do was two things. One is to, uh, to actually model the performance of the human eye so that we could produce an image of the same quality that the person using it would actually, the practitioner would actually be able to see. The other thing is to actually find a camera with low light level characteristics and that's able to focus through and produce a high resolution picture of the retina. Initially, instead of having a human eye here, he found it easier to hold it in his hand and use it rather like a mouse and then watch the screen. And that that's, may not sound like a large innovation, but that actually changes how the instrument is thought of and how it works. So tell me about the images that you're going to be able to see with, with this. It took a long time to build up the images. This is an illustration of one of the images that we've done with it. If you like, each circle here is one view which would come from looking through the ophthalmoscope. And what we've been able to do is stitch a whole group of them together. This way we get a very high resolution where we need it or the height to see the small features, which is actually how the human eye works. But we can also see right across. So here you're traveling from the optic nerve to the fovea, in fact. When you use this instrument and you move it past your patient, then you build up that view in your mind and that's what you retain. But that's not what you see on the screen, so we're trying to build it up on the screen so that you can uh, see that picture. Uh, I've got a second one here actually, which is a slightly different view, but again, built up in a similar way. It shows that what we've done is take a scan and we've moved following the features and now you can uh, follow through and you can see the sort of resolution that's possible. We've reached the point where we've replaced the human eye, if you like, with a digital representation and that means a lot of things. First of all, you actually have a record of what you're doing and secondly, it's possible now to take an image of this quality and then send it for diagnosis rather than have to make the diagnosis and then look at it uh, in situ. The three-year project has been a collaboration between the University of Warwick, UCL and City University with some funding coming from the WIMRC. Also involved are ophthalmoscope manufacturer Keeler and further consultation is ongoing with mobile phone companies looking at how to apply this technology further. We hope this particular arrangement will be about a tenth of the cost of a fundus camera but um, we have actually discussed the prospects of making this, merging it into what would be mobile phone technology, in which case it would really drop dramatically in price because the cost of the whole lens system and camera can be as low as £30, in fact. Gary Misson, a consultant eye surgeon at Warwick Hospital, has been working on this search for a high technology solution for several years, and he can clearly see the benefit of having a more versatile instrument. The new digital ophthalmoscope could be used in a variety of places ranging from accident emergency departments within the hospital to operating theatres, not even in a hospital. It could be used in a general practitioner's surgery or it could be used in an optometrist's um, establishment um, during the routine testing of, of, of their eyes. Now because the digital ophthalmoscope records a digital image, that can then be transmitted to myself or to another um, uh, ophthalmic surgeon um, via the internet or via a wireless link so that we can then interpret the image that's been taken and give advice about, about how, as to how that uh, patient might be treated. This instrument really is primarily a diagnostic instrument and tells us how urgent a problem might be. For example, there are a number of conditions that uh, require fairly rapid diagnosis, such as the complications of diabetes, uh, such as conditions like glaucoma, um, which can all be diagnosed with the digital ophthalmoscope. One of the clear advantages of the digital ophthalmoscope is the production of detailed maps of the eye, which in the future can be emailed to hospital specialists, cutting down diagnosis times and making a real difference to routine checkups on the high street. It'll give us the ability 
our every person that comes into the high street to have a look at the back of the eyes, take a photograph. The resolution seems to be quite good, so we can go into quite a bit of detail. Basic things like diabetic retinopathy or any other aspects of retinal detachment, or if to the degree of somebody may have a tumor or some some growth at the back of the eye, we can maintain a history, a record, something we can visually see, and hopefully as time progresses have the ability to email straight to the ophthalmologist for diagnosis and it gives us a lot more versatility and allows us a lot more flexibility in what we do with that information and data really. So I think it's fantastic. It's not only opticians that will benefit from this technology. A portable digital ophthalmoscope has great potential for use in third world countries where it could be saving thousands of lives. We were able to image now down to around two microns we're not perfect images, but we can see that there are ways of going one stage further with it to do that. But that means early diagnosis of a lot of diseases, which at the moment get unchecked or unmissed, can be spotted. And uh, early diagnosis, when uh, there's drug therapy, uh, is a, it can uh, hold off a lot of diseases. Mm -hmm.